So, hello and welcome back. Um, this time uh, we will do the stack 5 um, program. So, let's take a look at the sources this time. And as we can see, we don't have any win fun functions to, to jump to anymore. Other than that, it looks uh, really similar to the ones we've done before. So that means uh, we need to actually jump back into the stack again. And as we can see in the general de uh, challenge description, um, we should execute um, shellcode this time. And I have um, looked for a shellcode online and found this one. And I hope that this one works. I will link it down in the description again, so you can um, just use the same shellcode as I do. And for testing purposes, we could use um, XCC to see if we um, hit our shellcode or not. So yeah, let's get started. So I need to connect again, one second. So the first thing we want to find out again is the offset. Um, <coughs> where we can overwrite the return address. So for that we can again use a pattern. So I just use the alphabet real quick. So let's type that. Type that into a. F uh, let's redirect this into a file so we can use that as an input in GDB in a second. So now we want to do the stack five. And. First of all, we want to um, find out where it would jump to. So let's um, let's add a breakpoint right at the return, so we can we can take a look at the stack uh, because the first address on the stack uh, at this location is the the place where we would jump to. So let's uh, let's add a breakpoint right here. Um, now we should just run it and we have to provide some input. Okay, so of course we need to provide our program, uh, our pattern. And how did I name it? So let's do that. And we want to start from the beginning. 
Yes, and now our breakpoint got hit. And now all we have to do is to um, take a look at the stack. And one word on the ESP in the stack pointer. And we got this. Okay. So let's take a look. I don't know. Um, what letter that was. 54 in hex is a T. So we now we have overwritten the return address with these. So what we can do now is to pretty much copy that pattern. Let's do it like this. Um, because we, oh, oh, of course, I don't have write permissions here in that directory. But because we need to write an, ex uh, an exploit script anyway, let's just type the pattern into our Python script so I, we don't have to type that um, pattern again. And now we can just edit it. So now what we want to have is our pattern. Oh, let's call it padding because it's not the complete um not the complete pattern, but only until the T's, because we know we have overwritten return pointer with um, with T's, we can, we should from here on now overwrite the return address. So that is that. Now what we can do is have our shell code. Heading plus. Oh, let's call it jump to. Of course, I didn't uh, write that down right away. That was stupid. Then we want to have our knob sled as a padding, pretty much, so we can, because the, the stack moves moves a lot. So we don't know where to return exactly but we know the rough area and that rough area we just um, fill with knob instructions so we just jump right into that and then um, 
when at the end of the knob instructions is our shellcode, it will just execute and we can just jump anywhere and through the knob sled and just um, just slide down that sled and be happy. <laughs> So, so now what we have left to do is to define our knob sled or slide. I'm actually not sure. I think it's called slide, not sled. So the opcode for a knob instruction is x90 uh, is 90, and let's say we want to have that let's say 300 times. Then all we have to find now is our jump view. That should just be the address of our that just should just be the address of our stack pointer plus something. So we plus something so we um now we just jump right into the there so we just um add let's say a hundred and fifty yeah let's do that and struct packed actually helps us to you know define little endianness so we don't have to Um, so we don't have to write the address in reverse order, but, but just can paste it right into here. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get just get rid of that. Just leave it blank for now, and now let's find the address where we need to. Um, here's our stack address. So actually, our so let's imagine our stack does not move at all. Then we would jump. So then we would write this. Uh, let's say one. Um, one address higher into this address, then we would jump there and continue execution there. And as we know, we control the area there, and we could just place our shellcode right there and execute it. But as we know, the stack moves a lot, so we need to add a little bit more than just um, one instruction. And as we have um, as if we've as we've done it right now, we have a lot of knob instructions right behind that. So when we jump into somewhere in there, then we should be fine. So let's just copy that. Oh actually let's Let's do it like this we can echo this one and just append it to our Python script. So now we can open our Python script again. 
all we gotta do now is to paste that right here. Um, but without the quotes, I think, because we don't want to have it as a string. I hope at least. And then just add 150 to it. I'm not that great in Python, so let's hope I didn't make any mistakes here. That does look fine to me. So let's see. I'm not sure, but that looks fine to me. So let's just test it. So we want to have this. And because, um, of course, we start a shell, but that doesn't get any input anymore. It would just close. So we first need to cat, um, we first need to pipe um, the output of our script into stack five. And after that, cat takes over and we can supply our comments there. And it would then just get piped into uh, the stack five program that would just execute a shell by them and thus we can just supply our our shell commands like that to our our shell let's hope that it worked and at least we have something though, so let's see. And as we can see, we are user, which is unfortunate. And I actually don't know why. Oh, one second. Let's do that again. Our effective user ID is root. There, there we go. I, we just dropped the privileges here, right there, when starting the shell. Okay. Because um, the SUID bit was set in, as we can see, um, the red um, uh, um, highlight means that the um, SUID bit is set. One second, I can I can just show the show you that, so it's a little bit clearer. So as we can see here, um, for all the binaries, the SUID bit is set, and we can see here that the user uh, that the owner is root. So um, it effectively runs as root, and thus we have um, have a shell with effective uh, user ID root now. So just just to just to show you that we can actually perform something with it, let's just um, as as we, if you uh, as we've seen previously, we didn't have write permissions in that directory. So let's just write something. And that should have worked now. As we can see, we have successfully created our text. So yeah, that's that was it for today. And I know there was a slight increase in difficulty this time. There was a lot to go through this time, actually. I'm not sure if I covered it 
uh, good enough that it's understandable, but I hope so. So yeah, see you next time.